Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NTI Pod Talk. My name is Diane Kaler, and I'm the director of Nutrition Therapy Institute. This pod talk is our opportunity to have fun conversations with interesting people who have interesting things to say about nutrition, food, and health. I talk to NTI instructors, students and grads, to health industry professionals, to farmers, and anyone else who has an interest in nutritional wellness. While many of our listeners come from within the NTI community as students and grads, we also have prospective students who tune in. And to those listeners in particular, I hope you find that the people we talk to inspire you to finally make the jump to pursue your passion and come to school here at NTI. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the NTI Pod Talk. My name is Diane Kaler, and I'm the director of Nutrition Therapy Institute. Today, I'm so pleased to welcome a graduate of NTI, Karen Shrum, because Karen has, uh, I think, what many of you might find an interesting uh, story to share about where she went and where she took her education after she left NTI. So Karen, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you for having me. And it's a pleasure being here. I've watched a couple of these with you and I think they're very beneficial. So I'm, I'm pleased to be part of the program. Great. Um, well, so first of all, just a little bit of, of, background to where a conversation is going to start and then where we're going to go. Um, you know, we have uh, a wide variety of people who listen to our pod talk. We have obviously current students um, and graduates, but we also have prospective students who are looking into going to school for nutrition education, wanting to know kind of what, what, what are they choosing when they, you know, when they consider choosing NTI? Um, and so uh, I always like to give a little bit of background on our guests. Um, so where did your interest in nutrition start and what made you actually want to study nutrition? And then we'll talk about how you got to NTI. So Awesome. My beginning with an interest with nutrition came from just going to a nutritionist. Um, <laughs> when I was in my 30s, I just kind of wanted to fine tune my health and my weight. And so I just went and saw somebody here in Colorado. Uh, every Tuesday, I'd go meet with her for 30 minutes. And it became more than just your macros. It became more of insight into my eating habits and my lifestyle and how to make it work for a career oriented female who traveled a lot and figuring out what nutrition looked for that. And I saw her for a whole year religiously and I loved her. I loved the quality and the care that she provided me and I wanted to give back. I was in marketing and it was unfulfilling. And so I kind of started, you know, putting my toe in going down this road. I registered for a dietitian program at um, Metro State here in mm -hmm. Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I just began taking classes, but then that got waylaid because I got married and had children. And I completely put that on the back burner for, I would say 12 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so interesting because you didn't have a specific health concern. You didn't have previous experience with self-education and manipulating your diet on your own and then wanting to learn more. You took uh, a route that actually we don't hear a lot of. People just had an interest in supporting their own health without any specific wellness goals, just mm -hmm. sort of overall support. They went to, you know, a nutrition professional and that then opened their eyes and opened the door to wanting to learn more. So really interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was a diabetic. He had heart issues. Uh, both my parents were obese and it was just a check-in point for me going, I want a different path mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to rely on a handful of pills when I mm -hmm. get older. So yeah. what can I do now 
to better support my health, which isn't the norm. I get that. Yeah. 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 But that's great. I mean, I wish more people would do that. Right. I mean, if we could get more people interested in learning now, whatever stage they're at in their life, learning now what they can do to optimize their health, their wellness through their diet, um, to, uh, you know, to better their future outcome, what a different world it would be rather than waiting until you have some sort of, you know, health crisis, crash, whatever. Uh, Mm -hmm. and then having to scramble to catch up (laughs) to, you know, uh, past history of poor eating. So I, I wish more people took your path in getting interested. Well, I I wish they would too, but it's, uh, what I'm finding is nutrition can come in at any point, right? Absolutely, yeah. And help you better quality of life, manage whatever you're going yeah. through. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm a baby of six. So maybe that is why I, I'm a very observant younger child. <laughs> There and you go. I thought, well, you know, I'm not seeing good things happening here. So right. note to self, start taking care of yourself. <laughs> there, wow, that's great. I love it. All right. So you had this previous educational experience, and then you said 12 or 13 later, 13 years later, you decided to get back into it. So what made you kind of switch gears and not go back to, uh, you know, the previous school that you had gone to, but actually choose to go to NTI. And how did you find NTI? Uh, Yes. Also family experiences as they were. Uh, My dad had passed away from congestive heart failure. And then my mom uh, was diagnosed with uh, a very form of skin cancer, went through conventional treatment, um, had a really hard time dealing with recovering from surgery, side effects from the treatment. And then my sister was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer, Mm -hmm. went through conventional treatment, also was in and out of the hospital with a nine year battle of, of cancer. And you as a caregiver and seeing loved ones go through this, you feel very helpless. Mm -hmm. and you don't know what else you can do to help them and who else they should talk to and have they thought about this therapy or or protocol so uh it got down to the end of my sister's journey when she was diagnosed with an advanced stage and literally the next week in popped in my email inbox was this email from nti Hmm. I'm not real sure I signed up for emails or a newsletter, <laughs> um, but literally the, the subject head was oncology, nutrition, and Nutrition Therapy Institute. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, I am a, a Christian in the timing of that. I took to heart of, mm-hmm. okay, I need to pay attention to this. Mm-hmm. And um, that was in October and the following term. So I believe the next term for NTI started in February, I was registered and I was in, I Mm -hmm. was in the program. So that got me in the door. I started researching NTI and realizing that it was a completely different approach than a dietitian program. It was more holistic. And I really liked that from just what I was doing a little bit of research with, for my mom and my sister at that point, Mm -hmm. that felt right to me, that food food is medicine and food is a first attempt of improving your health and quality of life. And I liked that. So I enrolled instantly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Um, So yeah, I I do want to come back to that original email that you got, because that may uh, add add a layer to the conversation that I want to have. But before we do that, do you have, do you recall what year that was? It, I mean, it, it had to have been several years ago. 2018. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then when did you graduate from NTI? 2020. Great. All right. So um, are there any uh, specific um, 
areas of knowledge, skills that you gain from the program that you continue to use and find value in, even in your work today? Uh, immensely. <laughs> I, I, could, I won't, we wouldn't have time to cover it all. <laughs> sure. But what I went in with the understanding or assumption that I was going to become very knowledgeable about food with a science-based approach to it. And I left so equipped mm -hmm. for everything that I'm doing now. But I mean, I, you know, your class, you, I don't know if you're still teaching it, but you used to teach nutrients. I do. Yeah, I still do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. And that was amazing. Like I, I would come home every, you know, I'm in Colorado. So I had the benefit of being an in-class student, mm -hmm. which was yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And I would come home like, I have another fun food fact. I just kept coming back <laughs> home going, did you know that the tannins in coffee will block the absorption of B vitamins? You yeah. know, like, and yeah. you know, how many people take their B vitamins in the morning with their coffee and yeah. uh, sharing right. all this knowledge. I remember you talking about beef liver, beef liver, beef liver, and going <laughs> on vacation. I think you went to Norway and yes. you would have shots of cod liver oil and you had beef liver. And I was like, okay, I got to try it because yeah. we're the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Yep. So I use this stuff mm -hmm. daily, weekly, you know, with the clients that I see because you're trying to improve their health and their absorption and gut health and detoxification and um, all of it, like mm -hmm. the endocrine class, um, I use a lot and I, I had a hormone imbalance. So I just, it registered with me, mm -hmm. but 50% of the clients I see deal with a hormone based cancer, mm -hmm. um, mostly breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So I'm continuously looking at people's hormones and being able to read tests and, and help them figure out how food can play a part in balancing their hormones. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so interesting because you started off by saying, I went into school with the expectation that I would learn about food and nutrition from a science-based perspective. And that's all great. And you achieved all that and more. Yeah. Any kind of, what about any unexpected takeaways? Yes. Uh, what, you know, anything that you had no idea that would actually you know, be elucidated for you or, or that you take away from a program? I, I probably poo pooed the research and the business readiness classes the most. <laughs> and I probably walked away with so much needed tools for my practice today mm -hmm. from those two classes. Uh huh. Uh, everything we do through remission nutrition, which is the practice that I am with now, mm -hmm. is research based. You know, we're we're sharing research with people all the time, mm -hmm. so it's not. Um, I read it in this book. No, it's it's coming from PubMed or mm -hmm. it's researching a meta analysis so that people can better understand how to cipher through all this information on Dr. Mm -hmm. Google mm -hmm. because it's too much. Most of our clients come in and go. I'm so confused. Right. I don't know where to start. I don't know what applies to me. Help. Right. 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 So that that I I just find a lot of value in providing mm -hmm. to our clients. Mm -hmm. And then the the business ready me class, I thought I was gonna hate that class. Yeah. And I probably got a job. I had a job offer before I graduated NTI, probably because of my resume. Mm -hmm. of how unique my resume was due to that class mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of the communication techniques I use every day mm -hmm. of asking the right questions, you know, guiding them in a certain direction, setting the agenda, all these things that I would never have even thought about mm -hmm. from my own practice that I got from that class. And I just, I, I think it's still available. Yeah, the master's program. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I I just I can't say enough about what I gathered from that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I didn't prompt you to say that at all, but you hit like right on a very common theme. A lot of people who, uh, you know, get into the program once it, um, kind of, you know, 
when, once they get into the program and have some courses under their belt, um, and it gets to the point where they're starting to take the BRCS business readiness and coaching skills course, you know, they, they have a lot of um, resistance to doing that. And they're like, I don't know what I want to do. You know, I, I may, I don't even think I want to start a business. Why do I have to take this course? And there's a real reluctance and kind of, you know, like a blockage, an obstacle for people wanting to take that course. And we get a lot of pushback on that. And we're like, no, you have to take it because it's part of the program. You know, to get certified, you have to have that course. But um, it's not just for those people who know exactly what they want to do and they they already know the business that they want to start. And so this is, you know, the steps that they're going to take to actually start that business. It brings you a, a vast, you know, array of skills for yes, starting your own business, but also being a, you know, an important participating member in someone else's business so that that person has success. It also brings a lot of life skills. I mean, business skills are life skills. Being able to manage your money is a life skill, you know, being able to advocate for yourself and have um, you know, uh, eloquence in your communication, be able to articulate things clearly, that is a life skill. And so uh, I'm so happy that you say that you didn't want to take the course, but then once you got into it and got out of it, you realized how impactful it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's um, it's amazing. I mean, I, I even the research and communication, I, yeah, my right. last project was writing an ebook. I use that ebook today, right? <laughs> you know, right. I mean, how many people can say they walk away from a program, yes, take an assignment, and say I'm going to apply it, and it's it's relevant. Yeah, yeah. So it's it was um I was so happily surprised by how the program is is structured. The entire program is structured, you know, down to how you do exams. And how you want people to absorb the information, you know, and mm -hmm. the assignments. And mm -hmm. it was just so well done. Again, I'm an adult learner. I've mm -hmm. been through this before, you know. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it differently right. as an adult learner. But it's completely different than what I did for my bachelor's degree, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. I, I'm, I'm glad it, you know. It, it fell into alignment with your needs. Yeah. Um, and now looking back on it, you can say that. Um, okay, so uh, I do want to get into what you did after you left NTI. And um, I will preface this with, uh, you know, the way you found NTI was um, because NTI was promoting <clears throat> an, an oncology nutrition um course program that we had here. And, and I just want to, you know, uh, let everyone listening know that now that does no, no longer exist here at NTI, we no longer have an oncology program. Um, and that was what prompted you to even think about NTI. So obviously, that was an interest that you had uh, in, in um, pursuing oncology education, uh, after you finished your, uh, you know, your, your base program here. Um, so the oncology program at NTI no longer exists, but you still wanted to pursue that. So uh, where did you go on to um, do your advanced oncology training um, and kind of talk about, you know, what, what led you in that direction? Right. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I, I was so thankful to find you guys and to complete the program, which lo and behold, I needed to even continue into an additional certification in yeah. oncology nutrition. So right. it all worked out perfectly for me. Uh, Jess Kelly, who is the co-author of Metabolic Approach to Cancer book. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe she was a former instructor at NTI for a, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just kind of kept her on my radar because I knew of her and I kept hearing her name in the oncology nutrition world. She started her own program called on Oncology Nutrition Institute, which is a 250 hour certification program. But you can't just roll into that as uh, 
anybody, uh, mm -hmm. anybody, you have to have a, a prior to a degree to get yeah. into her program. Yeah. So I contacted her a month after I graduated NTI. I worked for her for a little bit. Um, my concern was that was going to be personally and emotionally too heavy for me due to my family history. So I just wanted to get my feelers in there and see. And she embraced me and um, I began taking the class probably four or five months after I started working for her from an admin perspective. Mm -hmm. And I completed her program and I now work at Remission Nutrition as a certified oncology nutrition consultant. Great. Okay. So th th that um, ties together the uh, chain of events very well. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for uh, uh, laying that out for us. So, you know, I, I, my assumption is that your interest in oncology came from your uh, mother's and your sister's experience with cancer. Yes. Uh, from a all of us here at Remission Nutrition have some personal connection to mm -hmm. cancer, whether mm -hmm. a loved one or there are some people who are cancering right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and consulting. So you know you have this empathetic place coming from of how to help people, whether they're the caregiver you're talking to or the, the actual client who is cancering, you have a different angle or a different understanding because you've been through it. Mm -hmm. So because of my history, I definitely wanted to find ways to allow people more opportunity to find health, find the quality of life, get through their side effects stronger, um, do some prevention work, you know, if it was a caregiver or somebody who just had cancer running in their family and they wanted to do prevention. Mm -hmm. And then post, you know, somebody who's gone through treatment and mm -hmm. um, has seen some imbalances in their life because of treatment, how can you help them find those balances again? Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that you work with a lot of uh, breast cancer clients. Is that, um, I mean, is that sort of your specialty working, doing uh, nutrition support for breast cancer clients or how would you describe that? Right. Uh, I would say we take it from a bio-individual perspective of somebody's mm -hmm. health. So we always consider their diagnosis and mm -hmm. their treatment and, and what's happening in their life. Mm -hmm. But we really look at the individual and say, what do you need? Because you had a different lifestyle from the other people that I see. Mm -hmm. You've chosen a different path and you have a gene different genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. So we like to look at the individual. Mm -hmm. um, the Metabolic Approach to Cancer book looks at these 10 terrain items, these different bodily systems and lifestyle choices. And we assess and address any imbalances in those 10 areas. And then we just customize it and say, you know, what does an individual need versus somebody else? Mm -hmm. So we really take a bio-individual approach. I always compare somebody's health to a Jenga game, where if you've got this- yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the- wood pieces. And as you pull mm -hmm. out the individual wood pieces, the structure becomes weaker and weaker and eventually falls. Mm -hmm. What we like to do is help people put those Jenga game wood pieces back in, fortify the structure so that honestly, cancer doesn't want to live there anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a, a great visual for, um, for this whole process. Um, okay. So um, I, I, I'm going to say something that I, I don't know what your response is going to be, but I'm, I'm assuming that in no way are you promoting that nutrition, um, takes the place of, uh, conventional cancer therapies. So can you talk a little bit about that, that we are not in any way making medical claims about, the use of nutrition and cancer. Yes, you bet. Nutrition is, in my mind, the companion that comes alongside of you through your journey. Yeah. Whatever you find you need to do for you, whether it's conventional treatment, holistic treatment, integrative oncologist, naturopathic doctor, whatever you have chosen, 
I come alongside of you and become part of your care team Mm -hmm. and help you make suggestions and and guidance with nutrition. We're food first kind of people, you know, what can we do with whole foods Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and guide you, but by no means are we saying we are diagnosing, curing anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, We are making suggestions and, and guiding people Mm -hmm. with nutrition and helping them understand the power of food and the power of a healthy gut Mm -hmm. and the power of balanced hormones and a good detoxification system and all of that. Right. Um, And that's, that's where our focus is for sure. Yeah. And of course, all of those are things that you got your foundational learning from, uh, from your courses here at NTI. Absolutely. I still refer to all the books and all the slide decks, uh, especially if I have somebody with SIBO Mm -hmm. or, you know, very specific thing that I don't touch on a daily basis anymore. Mm -hmm. I go back and refer to all that information that I got from the NTI program. Mm -hmm. Um, The the labs book right here, blood chemistry Mm -hmm. and CDC analysis. Yeah, yeah. That sucker's open weekly. I know, know, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, because I look at labs all the time because these Mm -hmm. people are getting labs run through their oncologist. Mm -hmm. And it's important to see which lab markers can be influenced by nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, all very good. And, uh, you know, working in the field that you have chosen, um, I think comes with um, an additional layer of challenges uh, because of the severity of the type of conditions that that people have and and the type of you know experiences and pathways that that they, that they choose to embark upon in their um, in, in their cancering. I, I like how you use that term cancering. Um, it's not something I've ever heard before. So. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that you chose that field and, and continue to bring lots of benefit to your clients, um, uh, using what you learned here at NTI and then building on what you learned in your oncology program. And then of course, building on what you learn on an everyday basis, because this is an ongoing learning process, right? (laughs) You don't learn something and then that's it. You're continuing to learn on a daily basis. So. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. uh, we always say it's about the person, not the protocol, right? Yeah, right. You know what's right for the person. And sometimes that takes you down roads of understanding how they are working metabolically mm-hmm. and what their digestive system needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's so customized mm-hmm. and constantly learning, constantly looking at new research and, and seeing what we can provide. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so I want you to talk to people, tell people about how they can find you. Tell us the name of the um, practice that you work with. Again, any kind of, you know, social media or websites, all that kind of stuff. Tell, give us all the details. Yeah, you bet. Uh, the most informative, best place to start is the company's website, which is just remissionnutrition.com. And in there are our bios. Uh, I'm not the only NTI grad. Jen Nolan is also an NTI grad and she Mm -hmm. owns Remission Nutrition. Mm -hmm. And in there, you can also see the different offerings that we have. You can book a consult with us via the website. We are on Instagram as well, just as Remission Nutrition. And I believe Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. And we have a newsletter. So you can always sign up for a newsletter to get more information and see what lands in your inbox. Yeah, great, great. Well, fabulous. Thank you so much for taking the time today. It was really fun talking to you. Um, I always love connecting with graduates and hearing what they're doing. And, you know, I I always want to put a plug in for our graduates, uh, uh, for those prospective students who are listening to this, because you can really see... um, you know, the quality of students and then graduates who leave this program. And um, that really speaks to the variety um, and depth of work that they pursue to do after they leave here. So um, you are, you know, a great example of that as well. So thank you so much for 
taking the time to be here today and having the conversation. Yes. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for doing what you do at NTI. Yeah. Thanks. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi there. And thanks for listening today. If what you heard today inspires you to want to pursue an education in holistic nutrition here at Nutrition Therapy Institute, please check us out on our website, ntichool.com, and reach out to us at admissions at ntichool.com. Our in-depth, comprehensive education is sure to provide you with the knowledge and skills you need to create the work of your dreams. Do something that feeds your passion, aligns with your values, and fuels your drive for a vital and meaningful life. It will be rewarding for yourself, your family, and anyone else with whom you interact. And with that, see you on the next episode.